How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Yourself? Good. Um, Joanne, you're a manager and you've got some really deep um, projects happening, really complex projects happening. And we're going to be talking about reflective thinking and learning today. So where would you like to start with that? Sure. Um, I guess I'd like to share my experience as a project manager and a, a business manager. Um, I've had over 20 years experience in this field. And my reflection is about how you can have qualifications and industry experience, but I'm found that you're often giving topics for projects that you have no idea about. So examples are some of my projects. I've worked in the fly-in, fly-out mining sector. I've worked in the tourism sector, um, the education sector, looking at the STEM capabilities of building that in the city. And um, my reflection today is on a current project that I've been working on for the last three years in additive manufacturing and 3D printing. So as a project manager, um, I came to this role at the Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct Project Office. And uh, one of the new developments in the precinct is by Griffith University, and they're putting in a uh, Advanced Design and Prototype Technology Institute. We'll call it ADAPT as the acronym, because it's quite a long name. It is, isn't it? And um, ADAPT will be looking at transforming industry and how they can really embrace 3D printing and the fundamentals underneath 3D printing and this includes rapid prototyping, um, advanced design, and also the new materials for 3D printing. So this was handed to me and um, I understand project management fundamentals and I know business management, but I know nothing about 3D printing. So my reflection is about when you're being given a project like this, I think it's really important to be motivated and be excited but embrace the opportunity because you won't know your topic specific information normally as a project manager. You'll be just given a topic and you need to go and search the, the information yourself and do the research. How did you actually feel when this sort of came upon your, your you know, across your desk? Um, what were your feelings when, you know, is something completely out of your, your normal context? Hmm. Um, I felt excited to start with because I think it's something for the future of the workforce and that's kind of what I'm working in my role is looking at what are the jobs of the future so it's very relevant to a passion of mine so I felt passionate about the actual topic because it's looking at what are those new jobs of the future and this will be one area that you know our kids are going to be so informed about and it's going to be helping generations to come um, and it's going to be very relevant to my role. So I had a personal interest but also had a professional interest because it was aligned to what my, my passion is for this city. Um, but I knew I needed to do a lot of work because I needed to understand from a local and a national and a federal level where additive manufacturing sat. So I guess my process, um, my process initially was to work with the university to find out what is 3D printing, what is additive manufacturing. I spoke to professors who were leading different institutes here at Griffith currently and they were wonderful. They gave me their time and I guess that's a key learning that never be scared to go and speak to these people because they're so passionate and they want to share their stories with you. So don't be frightened to go and make meetings with people because they will meet with you. Um, I spoke with students so I went in and, and sat in on classes and found out what is this that you're doing? What is a 3D modelling? And what is a 3D printer? And I, I could touch and feel and learn about the technology and, and what underpins the technology um, and what are the qualifications that you need to, to do this as well. I then felt a little bit more credible when I was going out to industry. So I had to do market assessment locally to look at is, is additive manufacturing of interest to the local industry? So the knowledge that I gained from speaking to academics, I could then go out to industry and be a little bit more credible about my content. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a deep understanding, but I had a level of understanding that made me feel confident that I could go and have a meeting with a, a boat builder and talk about 3D printing and what were their thoughts and would they be interested in looking at this in the future. So um, what was the next step when you, once you've got sort of a bit of a general knowledge and you mentioned going out to a boat builder to talk the language and, and um, you know get them on board um, what are the next steps there? Yeah um, the next step is to get a deeper level so once you start getting engagement with a boat builder for instance 
they'll want to know more information. And I found myself actually then looking at what are the journals involved with the new technologies in this space. I was subscribing to online and social media blogs or e-newsletters. And I found that was a really great methodology because once I did my research and found out what are the key journals, what are the, the social media channels that I should be following, the information came to me. So I could come into work and I could actually spend half an hour, first of all, just updating myself because the information was coming to me and I felt like I was becoming um, on top of the relevant information as well. As an individual, how did you, how did you feel taking on board all this new and, and foreign sort of ideas and, and technology? I guess for me personally, I found it exciting, but I'm a, a pretty optimistic person as well. So I always look at the opportunity, but I also met a lot of people that were also very skeptical about this technology. And, um, you know, you'll come across that because people will be saying, this is disrupting my whole workforce. So um, for the boat manufacturer, for instance, you know, they've got a workforce that that undertake traditional manufacturing. And here I am going in about this new technology, which potentially will, there could be people that need to be upskilled or there might be new skills that they need to bring in their business. And you're coming across some people that are innovative and looking forward to this technology, but you're also seeing other people that are quite scared about what's going to be the impact on their organisation. So it, I guess a bit of negotiation skills and empathy comes into it as well, because you've got to also understand where they're coming from. Even though I'm optimistic and excited, the other person has also got some, um, some reservations, I guess, about what this will happen to their business in the future. So with the, say the um, people who are a little bit resistant to the new technology, do you have any, like, there is there a story you can share with us on how you might have learnt and got them um, open their minds? Yeah, sure. To yeah. the new technology? Absolutely. Um, so the next strategy was to really bring in the right specialist to support me with where they had their concerns. And that would usually be a, an on-site visit to start with. So I would come back to my specialist, so whether that was usually from a, a professor level to start with or a senior lecturer, um, and then work out this was the concern of this actual company. We would come back to the university, we would brainstorm you know, what that looked like, and then we would offer to go back out to meet them with that um, person who had that technical capability and we would go out I guess together so then we could show them you know what the longer term opportunities are as well as as uh, you know a technical capability as well. So a few successes came out of that? Yeah we've, we've had some projects that have come through um, and that's collaboration with the university and also the industry as well. Um, there is a lot of funding so I think that is also extremely important for your self-development learning where are the funding sources because industry are really looking for tapping into that additional funding. So for your own role, you need to make sure you are aware from a federal and from a state and a local government, you know, where is the, the funding that is suitable for this type of project? Um, do the research for that organisation and it, it's all out there. It's, it can be difficult to find the type of government funding that's available but it is out there and I think you can be really positive for that business if you can show them this is the opportunity, this is the funding source and let's work together and we can bring in the right people to write that application. If they get funding then that um, partnership is a lot easier to actually implement as well. It's amazing because you, you in you know, in summary, I'm feeling that you've um, got this quite unique situation that sort of landed in your lap and through your, your persistence and your optimism, you really embraced it and run with it. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you believe in it, you've got to have a, a belief as well. Um, and I think there are some projects that have, have come to me where it's more challenging if you don't believe in it and um, you've got to kind of work out where that sits in your organisation and maybe it's a courageous conversation that you have with your manager at the time and, and to talk about, you know, am I really the best fit for this project as well? So I think being courageous but do your research and, and be planned if you want to have that courageous conversation. Um, but I think this one didn't need a courageous conversation because it's it's so exciting for the future. Mm -hmm. So in coming back to the reflection part of this, um, what, are, what would, do you think you could bring it down to three key points that you 
um, have learnt yourself from this project? Yeah, um, research is really important. So you need to understand and undertake your own research. Um, don't be reliant on others to provide that information to you. You know, if you want to be a successful project manager, you need to be willing to to read and research and talk to people to do that. Um, I think you need to be networked. So uh, I think we're living in the network economy now. That's my personal opinion, but. I think you need to understand who's out there and people need to understand who you are as well. So I think having broad networks um, is really important. Um, and the third, I guess, is, is keeping yourself up to date. And that could be from a, a school level or a qualification level, you know, it's lifelong learning. So if you've got the skills and the network and the ability to research, um, I think it's good fundamentals. That's great. Thanks so much for your time today, Joanne. Thank you.